All right. How are you? Uh, okay. Do you hear me? Yeah, what's up? All right. Um, so... I haven't read, I haven't um, watched any of the ContraPoints videos, so if you're like looking to... Then, no. Oh, buddy. What's up? What's up? Oh, shit. You like cut out. Hello? Why didn't you watch them? Um, I don't know. Because I'm not even sure if I would agree with any of the with that much. Yeah. I'm pretty. Um, I'm pretty. I'm pretty American here, so I fall like I fall really hard on the side of free speech, more so than probably any other leftist I know. But. but that's yeah. Um. I think that's a German thing that we're kind of um, anti free speech. Cons uh, exactly. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. Historically, we're uh, kind of proponents of anti free speech. Uh huh. Um. So, but but I think. Um, the, the ContraPoints videos, even though I don't agree with them, um, got me thinking about, um, I think, uh, kind of more pragmatic, but also deeper issue uh, about free speech. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to discuss. Okay, sure. So, um, the, so, so kind of the classical liberal meme going around now is like, oh, fuck. Um, those kind of leftist guys, yeah, they're banning all of our speakers and they're um, deafening uh, our free speech or uh, trying to silence us. Mm -hmm. yeah? um, and uh, in, in a sense, um, when ContraPoints responds to that kind of uh, meme, if you will, that, that is actually ridiculous and it's uh, it's not a point to be argued which is why um like this question about dave rubin and his platform um is not so uh, super interesting i think um so he's he's just a profiteur right sure. he's a profiteur of the right mm -hmm. so he can be safely disregarded but um what we actually want to talk about is how do we disseminate new ideas through society? That's uh -huh. the actual problem that we tackle with free speech, right? Sure. And we have kind of this idea of the free marketplace of ideas. Yeah, um, an American and idea. Free, yeah, Sorry. and it's a nice idea. <laughs> no, yeah. It, I, but the left hates you, you know that I idea. Like the left hates that idea. But, yeah. home, such as it is. Because actually it's supposed to do um, something that almost seems impossible because it's uh, caught between a rock and a hard place. Mm -hmm. um, because on the one hand, um, I think, what, what are we trying to get from the marketplace of ideas? We're trying to get um, the right ideas. We're, we're trying to get what's correct about the state of the world. Imagine the state of the world being like uh, a certain um, configurations of uh, parameters, okay, we're supposed to have this tax rate and actually global warming is, is advancing at this rate and those are true facts and we're trying to find them out via the marketplace of ideas, by people presenting that and mm -hmm. disseminating that through society, yeah. right? Um, while we, we want to find out the true facts, yeah, we also have to give um, voice in the free marketplace of ideas to a lot of different people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so to find out the, the true ideas, they might be at the fringe of society, right? Uh, of, of the uh, acceptable ideas right now. Yeah? They might be really fringe voices. I think that's something you touched on um, kind of uh, in passing. The foolhardy alike. Okay. You said like, um, Oh fuck! What if those guys? What if Sargon is actually right, or uh, something to that effect? Right? Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, where, where you were kind of memeing, but it's an actual thing that we need to think about. Yeah. What if uh, our critics are right? What if all the people we think are fucking retarded are actually correct? You know? Yeah, yeah. We agree. need kind of um, we we need kind of a learning process, right? Mm -hmm. um, we we need to find out in some sense. Which ideas uh, stand the test of time? Yeah? Okay. Um, by by 
uh, having them first presented. If we are silencing, if we're silencing them all the time, then we never find out about these ideas. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and then we need to test them. So the marketplace of ideas has to deliver both. It has to deliver um, both the opportunity for these ideas to be presented and then for them to be tested and presented again and then reinforced over time, right? Okay. Yeah. And that's uh, where, where the diff difficulty comes in because actually um, free speech is a super pragmatic issue. Free speech doesn't happen just around the corner where someone stands up on a soapbox and uh, kind of screams into the crowd. Nobody listens to that guy. Mm -hmm. Free speech actually happens only at very distinct places. It happens at universities. It happens in newspapers, respected newspapers. And um, to a certain extent, it also happens in, in some academic journals or semi-academic journals that are kind of um, for a broader or audience, right? Sure. Yeah, and maybe it happens uh, to, to a certain extent on YouTube and on the internet, but everybody has kind of their own corner on the internet. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, so, so discussion very seldomly happens between disparate groups where um, kind of actual sharing of ideas happens, right? Mm -hmm. So in fact, um, I think that's, that's why I'm so uh, concerned about um, the university free speech thing, because um, it's one of the... Um, it's one of the you, institutions you that should most closely guard these ideas, right? Oh, and also where the only opportunity is uh, for a genuine exchange between uh, people who hold disparate ideas, mm -hmm. yeah? yeah, where you can actually have someone um, who, who thinks, okay, um, race and IQ, there's something going on, we need to investigate that, and someone else who will take the opposite side, and they're both debating in good faith. Mm -hmm. yeah? That doesn't happen most of the time. Yeah? If you're debating like Ryan Falk, yeah, this this alternative hypothesis guy, he's not arguing in good faith. Uh, he's not going to tell you anything that's uh, going to undermine his position or concede any point. Sure. Uh, that's not a sensible actor. Yeah, You can't discuss anything with him. Um, but on a university, you might be getting close to be able to, ha to have some discourse where uh, ideas actually develop, you know? mm -hmm. um, and so the 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 actual uh, thing that's um, problematic and where society needs to act in a more rational way is in assigning these these spots where free speech can happen. You know? sure. um, what what kind of people are we going to? Uh, invite to talk at universities yeah um who have who are the guys who actually carry valuable in information to be discussed and who are the people arguing in good faith yeah mm -hmm. um i don't actually mind if like uh milo Giannopoulos is uh fucking banned forever from universities he's not going to tell me anything i, do, uh, I don't find out over the internet on some right-wing site, right? Well, maybe. I think you got to be a little bit careful with that. Like, there are good reasons for Milo to be banned from talking, but I don't think that's one of them. Um, like, why? Yeah, but, but, like, but, so but that's... My, my big point okay. is, like, who's making the judgment on who has a right to talk or not? Like, you're already kind of, like, selecting for, for free speech there, right? You've already moved past the point of free speech. Yeah. Where because, because uh, as I've, I've tried to relate to you, and I know that's um, kind of a, an irritating idea, but um, my, my idea of how free speech is supposed to advance is... Um, oh, process. like people arguing in good faith and whatnot, or...? No, no not, not that. Uh, that. That's one of the conditions for uh, learning, societal learning to advance. Yeah, um, but 
one of the one of the other aspects is um, if you're presenting some idea that's been generally discredited in science, if your idea has been examined and found in science to be um, not valuable, not credible, yeah, then we can disregard you. Gotcha. I don't know what Milo necessarily uh, talks about that's like discredited in science, though. No, isn't it mostly yeah, culture? The, the, no, the the fucking uh, stupid black crime stuff. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah, um, I guess you're getting where, into like really weird worlds here, though, where we're like, I guess, um, where you're like trying to regulate. I don't know. The, like, how do you determine like what's true or what's false? And at that point, like, I, I don't know if I think it's different in Germany, but in the United States, like our news media is a scientific debate. Um, I'm I'm arguing for uh, a different kind of free speech process where we throw out people who are just um, uh, acting in, in a way as to disseminate just kind of noise and not any kind of relevant signal that's going to advance the knowledge in society. If they're talking, uh, if if they're purveying. Um, something that is not agreeing with the facts um why would she, why would we need to listen to them no i understand what you're saying but i'm just saying like do you, do you see how that kind of a view can be twisted into like maybe selecting who you want to speak or who you don't want to speak like could could you argue that um, that would happen as a result of, of course of course that that will happen uh, and that's why that that's why okay if we're establishing effect like for example take climate change yeah mm -hmm. um climate change is a fact mountain of evidence right okay um, there are hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of papers you know, published on climate change and um so as to substantiate this fact yeah that okay. it's happening and that it's man-made you know? okay. if someone um the evidence why climate change isn't happening all right first we have to consider is he credible um and then someone who sets a debate uh for example at a university you know, mm -hmm. is looking at okay um what's weighing uh in terms of the evidence you know? and then you look at the uh the number of pieces of evidence on one side and on the other and if it's just a guy uh kind of who who is measuring temperatures in his backyards we can disregard him but if he has found like uh substantial flaws in the scientific literature then he is to be uh considered as credible gotcha. right? and that's something that that scientists can actually provide as a guide to um how societal discourse is supposed to proceed to arrive at um trustable truths sure. right that's that's what we're doing in the scientific literature and that's how knowledge is so, supposed to disseminate through society sure otherwise i can understand what you're saying science for? yeah i mean i can understand what you're saying it's just the only thing that kind of worries me is um is people that would misuse that in order to only let the kind of speech through that they themselves consider Okay. Yeah, right. I mean, I mean, it's um, it's a different thing if we're talking about um, like uh, morality or um, philosophy, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then then we're in a different realm where um, uh, the the standard to dismiss a certain speaker gets more squishy, right? Mm -hmm. But if someone is basing their argument, for example, their, their moral argument, okay, um, for example, like, uh, yeah, we should get rid of um, the society because they're dumber, right? Okay. Um, if that's based on, on false facts, like with the race realists, mm -hmm. uh, then we can just Great is the weapon that cuts on its own. don't need to debate them. Yeah, it's it's filtering a lot of the noise out of the discussion, and we're considering actually proposals to to society that matter. Yeah, I understand. Uh, I, I guess like I, I kind of understand what you're saying. It just seems like that that this would never happen in reality. Like for instance, know, like let's say yeah, like yeah. how would you ever have like public debates on like creationism versus you know like 
science, right? But like, how would you tell religious people that they're irrational and they're not really allowed to have an opinion on it, you know? Yeah, by uh, showing the evidence. I mean, <laughs> but the, I, but the, to I them, mean, evidence is like the Bible, you know? So what do you? Exactly, and and that's uh, kind of the stuff we would start to filter out. I mean, there in the in the way of advancing other good ideas you have to consider like the opportunity costs what could happen instead of some fucking creationists showing up for the 500th time uh -huh. and telling us about uh oh, what the bible predicted blah 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 and um uh, actually god did everything and you can see it it's written down here and the world is 5000 years old um no oh. Get the fuck out. I don't want to hear that for the 5,000th time. Sure. Yeah, yeah no, and, I... and, and it's... I mean, think about it. Yeah? Um, you, you, could, you could at the same time be discussing an actual idea that's, uh, that's relevant. You could have um, a, a, another discussion about uh, what the actual... Um, correct level of societal redistribution is and that's an actual topic where um, like uh, empirical comparisons of different studies have to happen and where people still need to learn about um, what the what the actual fact basis is mm -hmm. yeah I mean I don't I don't disagree with you I guess philosophically it would just be trying to get everybody on board with this might be really difficult yeah, I, I don't think it will happen either, but I think, um, uh, so So I started thinking about this um, when, um, the, I think the, the, the most relevant point in the ContraPoints video is the following. Mm -hmm. um, you, it, it's that um, opportunities for free speech are scarce, mm -hmm. yeah, and um, they're fought over by interest groups. Yeah? Oh, sure. um, there, there are different interest groups who want to push certain agendas. And if you look at the, the new ContraPoints videos, it's, it gets really apparent that he's part of an interest group, mm -hmm. which I don't blame him for. I mean, um, it's... Uh, I, I don't know. I, th I think he's chosen his tribe, and we can acknowledge that as... Um, uh, what he wants to do, uh, but it's also kind of disappointing um, because it ends kind of the uh, thing. Okay, but um, so we have disparate interest groups and they're interested at setting the debates that happen at universities. And these debates shape how people think um, in the future and how they discuss policy and how they discuss what actually happens. So capturing these uh, bots yeah, is actually pretty important. And it's actually very important um, who exerts pressure on the people who are currently assigning these spots. And we should realize that um, who gets to talk at universities has large repercussions throughout society because these ideas reverberate. People take this Thing, their children about it, their their relatives, yeah, and mm -hmm. that's that's where ideas are shaped. Yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, if you're reading something from a tabloid newspaper, maybe you're not taking it that seriously. But if a professor talks about it and seems to have won a debate at a university, that carries more weight, and that's going to influence ideas uh, throughout society. For sure. Yeah. And same, and same thing if it's in a reputable newspaper and there's no um, kind of contesting view. Just consider the, 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 the last thing I, I came up with. One, um, well, one quick thing to that point that you have to be worried about is that, like, keep in mind that one of the great failings of democracy is that it relies on like an informed public, right? So like some of what you're talking about is like nice in theory, but one thing you have to be careful of is like, let's say that we, we create this perfect world 
where you know we care about like ac- like intellectual integrity and we, we want people to be honest and you know have good discussions that are scientifically founded well if you get a lot of people that disagree with this they might just end up calling those institutions fake and then they'll favor their tabloids anyway kind of like how like a lot of conservatives are very anti-education they're very anti um, intellectual right they, they say things like oh you know like schools um, academia is just a liberal breeding ground where it's all liberals and blah 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 you know if you want a real education you have to go to either some weird pro- private like the college hillsdale college or or, or or you know like read like info wars or some shit you know like because all of cnn and yeah. msnbc are all fake news and shit you know i mean oh, of course that um that is fucked um and you can't really do um i i mean uh, that is where you have to hope that the process of societal learning that you're setting up Mm -hmm. over time eradicates these kind of tendencies and people start to value um, this this sort of debate. But before you um, kind of have, uh, uh, you can can start to consider that, you have to set up um, a version of the marketplace of ideas that can actually work, right? Before you can um, compete with... uh, the, the irrational guys, you have to set up a model of rationality that over time arrives at the correct conceptions about the future states of the world and uh, that it disseminates that information in a relevant way mm-hmm. yeah, so that it reaches a lot of people. That's, that's what I'm concerned with. I'm concerned with um, setting up notion of of a um, societal learning process that works over time and works toward um, finding the the correct state of the world in the future sure yeah i understand yeah and uh, to to the the contrapoints thing i mean he he basically uh, state uh, states in no uncertain terms um, uh, uh, I'm sorry, you, wait, 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 you cut off he end states what? point that um, you echoed uh, that um, kind of people like Dave Rubin are um, only defending the free speech of uh, certain with. conservatives mm-hmm. yeah um, and uh, Dave Rubin never gives a platform uh, to people like uh, uh, contrapoints himself I think contrapoints inquired to be on Dave Rubin and uh, never got a response right mm-hmm. um, uh, and so there, there are certain uh, spaces where no interaction can happen mm-hmm. realizes that and says okay uh, Dave Rubin you're just trying to uh, defend the free speech of people like uh, Richard Spencer or uh, whomever is on the right but uh, never the free speech of um, people, that you people like yeah. Yeah. Yeah, exactly and that is correct um, but uh, Dave Rubin is, is, is not the model for um, intellectually honest uh, discussion. It's just another echo chamber for the right. Sure. Yeah? And uh, then can be dismissed by people who actually want to find out the truth. Over time, you find out that Dave Rubin is just not telling you anything interesting. Yeah? Mm-hmm. And discussion on Dave Rubin aren't telling you anything interesting. But it's a very different matter if we're talking about uh, universities and if we're disinviting certain speakers like Charles Murray or shouting them down uh, point blank because um, certain people have a distorted idea of what he's actually talking about um, in his book, then um, I I can't agree with that. And uh, if we can't consider ideas like... Um, those contained in in the bell curve at least consider them and then we can over time learn about whether they're true or not Um, but if we can't even consider them then societal learning is disturbed and uh, 
That's why we, we need to admit a broad class of uh, ideas in, in these kinds of discussion where, where actually learning can take place. And so uh, I, ha I have a very um, bad feeling about the idea of uh, people like ContraPoints controlling uh, the debate at universities. Okay. Main concern. I, I'm not so much concerned about um, YouTube because uh, on on YouTube you you have already chosen your tribe, right? Mm -hmm. You um, you're not going to learn much on YouTube, no. Okay. Um, but uh, it's it's very different if you're entering like a real world um, situation and you're confronted with two professors who are making arguments and um, you're, you're actually um, so supposed to learn what their, what their argument chain is down to every point, you know? mm -hmm. like with Charles Murray. He wanted to present his case for um, what's in, in his books, you know? but he just didn't have an uh, opportunity to do so. You know? sure. And there was, uh, was a... Um, discussion to take place, but students disregarded it just out of hand. Okay. So um, that that's mainly why I think um, uh, we, we should stay at the, at least for now, we should stay at a model that admits a more broad range of ideas, at least at forums like uh, universities and uh, reputable newspapers. And we shouldn't kind of uh, develop these ideas like ContraPoints tells us about in his latest video that um, we should first think about uh, certain marginalized groups like his uh, trans people or whatever he's uh, trying to protect at the moment. Okay. Gotcha. Oh. Okay. Yeah. I mean... Um, I've been going on for a bit. Uh, I don't. I don't know uh, if you if you want to respond to anything uh, hey, other than that. It's unrealistic uh, to, to have the kind of model that I'm proposing. No, I mean I don't think I necessarily disagree with you in an ideal world. I'm just, I don't, I'm not sure what the chances of being able to sit something or how well that would actually work in reality. I guess, but yeah, I mean it would. It would need some um, kind of uh, up gaps and it would need some shielding from corruption. Like when we are considering uh, what scientifically acceptable facts are, mm -hmm. um, that's, uh, I mean, even in peer review, we have large problems of finding out what uh, scientifically acceptable facts are. Yeah. Um, so. Oh, I think that's uh, that's a fun story to close uh, things out um, because it's something from uh, my area of study. Mm -hmm. So in recent times, um, economic research has uh, focused on uh, a branch that is called happiness research. Okay. Have you heard about this? Nope. Okay. Does this so, have to do with like satisfaction? with like certain types of work or? Uh, n not necessarily certain types of work, but um, overall happiness, being happy. Okay. Yeah. Um, so uh, in, in recent times, uh, economists have shifted from building models of utility based on the notion that people like to consume more things and like to work less. Yeah, to mm, point blank asking people how happy they are. Okay. Um, th those answers are collected in recent surveys, and then you're trying to find out um, how, uh, like, differences in work hours or differences in consumption affect people's happiness. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, but it's uh, 
the the main problem is um, the the measurement of happiness. Okay. Which is probably pretty hard to get exact. Yeah. Uh, so so how would you uh, go about measuring happiness? I want to find out how close you get to the actual thing. Oh fuck! I. Have to, um. If you need if to, to ask to, a person how happy he is. If you needed to ask a person how happy they were. Um. A moment of valor. I don't know. I mean, the answer, the obvious answer, would be surveys, but I don't know if a survey would really find you accurate. I guess you would try to. Yeah, but but it's of him. course it's a survey, but 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 what kind of question would you ask? Um, I don't know. I, you'd have to dig into psychology and find out what what are things that happy people consider important. Like what? Like, I guess like you're looking for like like KPI, like key performance indicators. Like maybe questions like how do you like what kind of future do you see yourself having from five to ten years from now? Do you see yourself doing better or worse financially, educationally? Do you have plans for a family? Like maybe these things can point towards uh, happiness. Like this is so funny what? because it's uh you're you're going um like five degrees farther than any kind of um happiness researcher has considered okay no uh what they they put in the survey is a question like how happy do you feel and then um people can answer from one very unhappy to 10 super happy okay yeah this seems like a bad way to do this kind of research but <laughs> yeah <laughs> It seems like a bad way to do this, right? Um, okay, so, uh, but but what has turned out is um, uh, actually a, a large in, incestuous literature has formed around happiness research, mm -hmm. where people uh, in this branch, yeah, they're, they're basically issuing these surveys and uh, finding out relations of happiness to all kinds of uh, socioeconomic variables like okay. um, uh, are you happy with having more children but um, uh, then how happy are you with your work when you have that many children blah 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 mm -hmm. yeah? all kinds of uh, regressions where you're trying to find out what are the determinants of happiness okay and this literature has grown so large that it um, has access to the most important journals in economics. Like one of the uh, primary outlets is uh, the so-called Economic Journal. And um, the Journal of Economic Behavior and Organization. And both are very highly respected journals. And okay. um, happiness research of this type is published there all the time. But what has actually been found out is that this type of measurement where you're um, measuring happiness from on a scale from 1 to 10, not only is it not transferable across um, like uh, uh, countries or even states in a certain country uh, or even people, but it's also... problematic on a on a very fundamental level that uh, in the way that um, if you're trying to find a certain association for example of um, how many work hours are uh, relevant to diminishing your happiness at mm -hmm. what point are you starting to um, dislike your work yeah uh -huh. if you're kind of uh, changing the scale around yeah at certain points where you're um, uh, uh, determining the cutoff point, for example, between your of happiness one or your of happiness two, mm -hmm. yeah, um, completely reverses uh, uh, the association between hours of work and happiness, for example, okay. or any kind of measure. So um, the the whole literature is um, kind of based on on a sound castle it's crumbling down um because the the way of measuring this is completely unreliable yeah okay. it's completely arbitrary and unreliable and uh we can't 
infer anything from this literature. But it has built up as a um, big construct uh, in, in the scientific economic literature. And now we're trying to uh, kind of exorcise this. Yeah, We're uh, trying to kind of get out this bad knowledge and trying to downgrade the um, journals that publish this kind of research, with, which has happened recently. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so, of course, even the, the peer review process, which is supposed to only select um, scientifically, uh, scientifically correct uh, articles, yeah, mm -hmm. um, is corruptible by uh, kind of an in-group bias or a circle jerk, if you will. Um, and of course, then uh, it spells kind of doom for finding out the, the actual effects of uh, highly disputed ideas. Huh? Sure. So, okay, from that, I take the criticism. Wait, what criticism? Very difficult to arrive at um, the, the truth value oh. uh, of, of, a, of a certain statement that is um, uh, passed around in a debate. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, cool. Anything All else? right, buddy. Uh, no, I think I'll uh, see myself out. All right. Well, hey, buddy. I love you. It's been fun. Stay bye safe. bye. See you later, buddy.